So it's Monday morning in my garden in Epping and, um, and when I came out this morning I quickly discovered that it's a bit less spring watch and a bit more home improvement watch so apologies if you hear some drilling in the background, those crows and of course the occasional train um, going past. But this morning is all about backs um, and I wanted to just bring me down onto the floor to start off with. It just makes it a little bit easier um, to, to demonstrate some of the things that we're going to do. Now why is Pilates so good for backs? One of the main things that we can do for backs is just get them moving. We tend to get backs really stiff and quite rigid. Now I'm not saying, and it's really important to know this from the start, that Pilates doesn't fix all back conditions. It is really important if you've got something specific or chronic going on with your back that you see um, a medical professional or a physio at the very least, get a proper diagnosis and then we know what we're working with. Otherwise, it's like trying to make a cup of tea when you don't know what tea that you actually like, okay? So you need to find out what's going on with it. That said though, there is a lot that we can help with. So if you're not in chronic pain or acute pain, um, then do some of the moves that I'm gonna do and it's gonna just help your back to, to get moving. Always really important with backs that you move in a pain-free range. So our spines are designed to move three ways. They're des designed to move um, side to side. So this is our typical side bend. And I would tend to always start a class with some kind of a side bend because it's the bit that we do least of during the day. If you think about yourself sitting down at a desk or even moving around or even running, how often do you do sideways movement? You don't very often. And it's nice to do them seated because your hips are fixed. There goes the drill. Um, so it's a really nice way to get your spine moving. But do bring it up to standing. Do move your hips. Have a little bit of a wiggle of your hips. Maybe in the kitchen, here comes a train. Give me a second. So the other thing, oh, that's just coming into Epping. So it's gonna be really long. So the other thing that we wanna do is forwards and backwards motion. I am gonna sit with my legs outstretched. That's quite comfortable for me. I'm aware if you've got any restriction in the back of your hips or, um, or your hamstrings, you might need to bend your knees. You might need to put a cushion under your knees. You might need to sit on a cushion. And this is the other thing with Pilates. If you get to an, a class where you're actually talking with an instructor, and yes, you can do that online, we can give you those little tweaks to help. So we've got a forwards fold. Now I'm not interested in whether you can touch your toes or not. I just want you to feel that you've got that stretch from your heels all the way up the back of the body to the crown of your head coming forwards. That's our forward fold. And then I'm gonna bring my hands back and I'm gonna just lift up through my chest. So my hips are fixed. Now I'm pressing my ribs up to the ceiling. And I'm gonna breathe here, because actually if you breathe, on a stretch through the spine, the ribs help you. So take a nice big breath in and then let it go. And then we're gonna reach and we're gonna fold forwards again. Now, a lot of the Pilates moves involve these kind of forwards and backward rolls. This ability to find a kind of C shape or a U curve through your spine. And we spend a lot of time in classes really focusing on the first five moves in Pilates, which are so fundamental to the way our bodies move. So I'm pushing into my hands again. Now I'm gonna take a deep breath. And what's really nice is that on my out breath, I can fold forwards. And I'm gonna just reach my hands forwards like someone is pulling my hands. There's a lot of push pull in Pilates. So by that I mean, you're always thinking, okay, my hands are going down now. My ribs are lifting up now, but I want my hips anchored on the floor. Anchored, anchored on the floor. Nice big breath in. And I'm gonna exhale and reach forward. And it's so lovely if you've got a lovely day and you can sit in the garden and doing it. I've just got a rug, I've not got my mat out because it's just a really nice thing to do. So we've done some side bends, we've done forwards and backwards movement. I want to add a little twist here. There are a few ways of doing this. The first is one of my favorite stretches that I finish a lot of my classes with. We're gonna just bring your hands around your feet and we're gonna just twist here and look over your shoulder. And we're gonna twist and look over the other way. Now, as you're twisting, you wanna really lift up through those ribs, lift up through the crown of your head so you get that twist there. If this isn't good on your knees, Again, have those feet outstretched or do it on a chair because even then you're gonna have your, your hips anchored, which is what we want. We sometimes think, okay, what part of our bodies can we fix so that we get another part of the body moving? Because our bodies like to take the easy ride. So if you're standing up, generally your hips will just do all the twisting for you. Then from here, I'm gonna take this down onto the floor. 
and do a couple of things here. Ooh, this is nice. So we're gonna bring my hands out to the sides. I'm gonna lift up to my tiptoes. Now, my hips, my back, my head are anchored onto the floor. So now if I just let my knees go to the side, very carefully avoiding my cup of coffee, I'm gonna just twist here, those knees come across. And if I focus on trying to let those ribs come down to the floor, I'm gonna get a bit more twist through the spine. And then bring your knees in. And again, if you just add a little breath to this, now this all seems very much like all I'm doing is stretching. And to be honest, at the moment, that's pretty much all I'm doing. Here comes another train, so give me a moment. But once we can move, we start to take that into Pilates. So we start to think about things like our hip circle, which starts with this movement, where we're feeling that hip lift, we're feeling that lift uh, twist through the torso and we're getting that control through the trunk. So that's our little hip circle and we come in. So with Pilates, it's about kind of demystifying it. Yeah, so what move am I trying to get first in order to be able to do another move? And even when we think about, let's take a shoulder bridge, which is so lovely on your spine. So your feet are underneath your knees. Do this with me. Let your hands come down by your sides. Now I'm gonna just lift my hips off the floor, but I'm gonna lift it by rolling just been joined by little sparrow so we're going to lift up to the top feel those sides come together probably a really dodgy angle i apologize and then roll down towards the floor so you want to feel like if i have my hands on my hips i'm going to spin the tail under now how nice is that on your spine you roll if you imagine your spine is going to move one vertebra at a time we come up to the top and we slowly come down towards the floor you can hear crunching in the background that's a little sparrow munching on a mealworm and then we're going to roll on under and up and find your bridge at the top and if you just hold there now coming back to backs bottoms very often their glutes have lost their kind of intensity we call it um glute amnesia where they forget what they're supposed to do and they stop working a shoulder bridge is brilliant for starting to get a little bit of uh, remembrance <laughs> back into your bottom squeeze it now feel how that bottom works and then roll that down towards the floor. So this is a real uh, more bang for your buck exercise. So you're gonna just roll on up, you get the movement through the spine, you get the work in the bottom, you get the work through the insides of the thighs. It's also a brilliant pelvic floor exercise because we're taking everything away from the pelvis and just focusing on that control. Now press your hands down, we're long through the back of the neck. How nice does that feel? If your back feels uncomfortable, just drop a little lower until you start to get the strength those ribs come in and then we roll back down towards the floor and that's really all i'm going to talk about today those three ways of moving so just always remember you've got your side to side you can do it like this you can do it like that you can do it with the breath we've got your forwards and backwards we can do it here forwards and backwards we can do it here where we just lift those ribs up and then drop those ribs down we lift those ribs up we drop those ribs down and then we've got that little twist and so you could do it here the twist here becomes a little pilates spine twist becomes a pilates saw so really it looks once you put it all together it looks more complicated than it really is but if you imagine if you were going to start baking i don't know like a kind of layered sponge like they do on um, great british bake-off you wouldn't start with a layered sponge you'd start with a victoria sandwich and this is what we want to do with pilates we want to bring it right back to what the moves are and then we put it together it doesn't look so complicated so just for this week for me just kind of curl away from any fancy pilates on instagram and just think about those fundamentals for me and i'm going to be coming back tomorrow and we're going to be thinking about pilates for runners so things that um, pilates that can really help with your running so i shall see you tomorrow